Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 8. Thank you, first of all, to everyone who joined in on this adventure. Thank you for all of your comments and for your opinions and thoughts about the episodes as we went along. It really made this season enjoyable to see your guys' reactions to, especially if the episodes had a bit of a different sort of feeling about it, because, and I'll be quite honest, I, I got bored. I got through this because I had a session, like I had a real like commitment to it, but it did drag quite a bit, and I think that is in part due to the fact that Jeremy Carver took over a season that really had maybe season three's amount of story. So they had to make up a lot of filler episodes or seemingly filler episodes to make up for that. A lot of notes about just how wasted season seven was, was clearly evident while the show was going on, while the season was being made. While Carver definitely had some elements to make a compelling narrative, sort of at least, halfway through. He had to try and make up some other things along the way. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. This is also kind of the starting point for what a lot of people would say is kind of when Carver would start to kind of change the lore a little bit. I was very guilty of calling Dab out for a lot of the lore changes that he did, a lot of retconning, and there are a little bit of it in this season. It makes more sense for the most part. It, instead of a retcon, it's like a side tangent. For the most part, there are some things that were a little bit retconned, but it was enjoyable for the most part. It's just how long it took for the season to get going. That is the biggest complaint about this season. This one was obviously following the brothers rekindling basically themselves after Dean went to purgatory and Sam kind of just gave everything up while these two were kind of bickering with each other about who could trust one another. Sam was going through his own kind of memory flashbacks with this Amelia lady who I know that a lot of people didn't like that story and yes I can understand as to why it's not supernatural. It was quite literally just a love story. I'm going to sound maybe Pat perhaps a bit sappy but I liked how they did it because it's the best one that's been done in the show uh, aside from some that appeared in, in season one, two, and maybe four. The Amelia character while not really posing much to the actual show really had some connection with Sam like that was a story between her and him yes it wasn't supernatural but I thought it was done all right but at the same time I can understand why people didn't like this story because really didn't go where it was just about the characters same thing for Dean like I feel that Dean was just a giant asshole to Sam admittedly he did of course have his reasons for being mad um, about Sam not really helping to get him out of purgatory but really the guilt should be on Sam for fucking leaving Kevin behind because that poor boy no goodness that has happened to him throughout this entire season this entire show and it was felt uh, this poor guy just having the absolute worst time from his mother being roped into being lobotomized to eventually being killed off screen to having him go through a various amount of fucked up shit the fact that Kevin Tran ever had any happiness throughout this entire show is a miracle but there were some other side characters who were pretty well done Benny being one who started off pretty strong had a cool concept cool relationship with Dean had some episodes that were just depressing finding the clan that basically killed him and took away his lover to completely fall in upon itself that his lover had been turned and he had to then have her get killed because she was doing the exact evil shit that he wanted to not be a part of anymore to him finding his granddaughter and then having to reveal himself to her and killing a crazy fucking hunter which that was also a really bad move by sam sam's usually the smarter one of the two of the two brothers but he was real fucking idiot by having him tail uh benny that was also playing into this the jealousy and the hate and the deceit between the two brothers and that was also an overarching storyline in this season the bickering between the brothers while some people have re reasonable criticism of this like oh it's happening again they were at least trying to make it matter like yes it was really drawn out but they did have reasons for bickering whereas in the andrew dab era and definitely after this season it's gonna kind of be created for drama's sake this had a reason to be the way it was and it was also kind of like the overall arc of what happens to sam comes sacrifice which brings in the demon trials the demon trials once this shit got started was interesting if a bit muddled perhaps but it got to a point where it was an enjoyable run if there were some big things of idiocy but it also introduced a lot of cool things like knights of hell uh it introduced curing a demon which 
found correct never comes back again. It also was able to give us some pretty great performances by Crowley. Mark Shepard did a fantastic performance in Sacrifice. We deserve to be loved. I deserve to be loved! This season introduced a lot of things, not only like with characters like uh, When Everyone Hates Hitler with the Golem. That was really cool. It dipped into a lot of um, kind of ghosts and lore from other parts of the world, which was an interesting thing. And it even dipped into things that we had seen before, but giving a little bit of a different twist, like the Jin and um, werewolves and whatnot. There were also some introductions like the Men of Letters. We finally got to see the home. We got to see where the brothers would basically set up shop for the rest of this show. This was a huge moment. And while I thought that the guy who played their grandfather was a terrible fucking actor, I did like what that episode introduced, if only being terribly represented by a really bad actor. On the same token, there were some filler episodes in throughout this one. We had some funny ones like Southern Comfort, our Hunter I Hiroki, which I know I'm saying that wrong, but the, the fucking Looney Tunes episode, that one was funny. LARP and the Real Girl, we had Charlie come back for a couple of episodes, she was really good. It's good to be queen. But there were also also had some this is some pretty shit ones particularly the bitten one uh, for me very much so freaks and geeks and remember the titans both of these episodes are really fucking bad there are some other episodes in this one that have different opinions by some people i know i am one of the few who thought that man's best friend with benefits yes terrible fucking title but an interesting concept yes was it done well in certain cases and does it kind of seem a bit uh, yeah but i like the idea of a cop using witch powers and having this well, basically his lover be also his companion thing it was really high fantasy shit like some fucked up high fantasy shit that you know, I could see that in like Martin-esque kind of, George R. R. Martin-esque kind of storytelling. Did it fit into Supernatural? Maybe not, but I think it was just so different that I was like, oh, you know what? I'm actually not opposed to this. Yes, but I can understand people who don't like it. Yeah, I get why. And then there was also some other stuff that was about the show that like going back to the kind of the retcon stuff, the entire idea of there being coyotes for demons to get out of hell. And then also how there's just been this backdoor to purgatory this whole fucking time. Crowley and Castiel and the Archangels spent all of season six trying to figure out how the fuck to get in there, yet apparently it's been the door that they have to go through to get out. So Crowley, by definition, would have possibly gone through this at one point. The more and more you thought about it, the more and more that whole kind of retcon just really fucking broke shit and I understood why people did not like that. I like the episode itself, but yes, the retcon was pretty stupid. You knew somehow, right? You took a chance. Some big notes though, there was not a single 7 out of 7 for me in this. There was not a single perfect episode for me. There was a few good ones. I really, really like Pac-Man Fever. Really, really like Goodbye Stranger. My favorite episode of this entire season. It was the one that made me care about watching Supernatural again. Also had Blood Brother. Very, very good. I know a lot of people really, really like Sacrifice. And I did too. I liked one part of it. But there was another part that I thought was just like, okay, this is... This is a tad stupid. I know I'm probably in the minority on that one. It's not a bad episode. It's just not a perfect one. I thought it was going to be. I totally went in thinking it would be. But that's kind of the feeling I've had throughout this season. The whole time I was going through six and seven, I was like, it's gonna get better. They haven't seen season eight in forever, but at least it's better, right? Technically speaking by the numbers it was, but it was only better than one of those two I mentioned. Out of the score for season eight, uh, of 23 episodes, it was a score of 161. All told, all of my reviews, this season got a 96. There are, count the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fours mid-episodes. That's how many there are. And that leads into the percentage being 61%, which is better than season seven, better than season seven, but it's not better than season six. And I have to say, yeah, there's a few better episodes in season six than there was in season seven. Like I actually gave sevens in season six. I gave a seven in season seven, but in the end, my overall rating, my actual four, my out of seven, I'm going to give season eight of Supernatural a four out of seven. It's okay. That's basically the best thing I can say. It's not terrible, 
but it wasn't great. It wasn't shit, but it wasn't gold. It was very much middle of the road, and that is how I felt throughout this whole season. It's still one of the better ones of post-season 5, but that's a big pool of uh, to talk about. They had some cool ideas, but it was too drawn out. They had some great episodes, but they weren't the gold. They had a lot of mid. And the ideas that they introduced, while really cool at the time, kind of have a little bit of errors and some inconsistencies the more you think about it. Overall, though, Season 8 is commendable for being what it is better than seven. That's what it all boils down to. But those are my thoughts about this season. I am very interested to see what you guys have to say, so, so let's see what you guys have to say. Season eight was a mixed season. There was bad mixed with the good. Charlie and Benny were the best add-ons in the season. The Goodbye Stranger is by far the best episode of season eight. Yep, very much agree with you here. Like I said, it's, it's mid-mixed. It's just kind of eh. This season really got the let's make Kevin miserable arc from Sam completely abandoning him to Dean working with him, uh, working him like a slave, treating him worse even than the demons did. Yeah, it's like not taking him to the to the bunker. Castiel even got a few licks in, and it only got worse from here. Seriously, why do the writers hate this man so much? And I usually don't play replies, but I like what Patrick said here. I'm convinced the writers or the producers had some sort of grudge against the Kevin's actor. Like maybe he hit their children or slept with their spouses. That's the only way I can justify the torture they put him through in just this season, but not, not just this season, but the whole series. Absolutely, Kevin Tran never got a fucking break in this entire goddamn show. Now that we got a big one here from Patrick, this is a hard season to rank. Like most fans, I love the second half of the season, but after watching your reviews, I really started to realize that maybe we've been blind, we've blinded ourselves to its flaws, plot holes, and bad acting due to how much we hated the first half. And yeah, that can happen. That's like, that can really happen with shows. It's only upon re-reflection that you rewatch. Is why it's, I'm, I'm very curious of how I will see season 11 when I rewatch it again, because it will be like the first time I've seen it since that I watched that show. Eight and nine greatly suffered due to half of their season feuds. Regardless of whose side you were on, both brothers look bad at the end. Also, just feels so tense and bitter, and there's no fun in any episode, and the plot feels like it slows down to focus more on the fight, then it speeds up near the end to wrap up everything. I think that's why most fans are forgiving of Henry, Chrissy, and the Prometheus, epi uh, Prometheus episodes. But also, despite the flaws of the second half, nothing was as rage-inducing as the first half, but sadly, the second half felt too fast-paced for the main story. The tri trials themselves are barely a quarter of the episodes, which is probably why fans aren't as upset as they uh, as they were with nothing in, in the end. Cass suffers the most from this fast pace, making him look like a complete impulsive idiot. Thankfully, next season he redeems himself and there's a good riv rivalry between him and Metatron. Sadly, the writers would make him act like a complete fucking idiot again, keeping unnecessary secrets again in season 14. Honestly, I think that Cass was an idiot for a majority of the show and like they used up that character. Um, and I think we're going to see it definitely in the latter seasons. On closer examination, Sam suffered from this too. Them bringing the demon blood back completely out of the blue with same with Sam being overcome by his past mistakes. In the second episode of the season, we met this woman whose life was ruined when Lucifer got out and berates Sam for it. Now, why wasn't something like that put in the season? Now, yes, Dean does bring this stuff up in two different episodes, one under the cursed coin, yep, and another is a bad joke, but there's a huge gap in between, and it would make sense that the brothers were still fighting in the second half. Their, uh, hell, Dean makes up for this attitude as the season starts. Not only did he cut ties with Benny, but he sent him to his death for Sam. We've had episodes where Dean confirmed his love and trust in Sam. When the trial started, Dean said he wants Sam to have a normal life. He was only mad because it seemed like Sam didn't care about him. Had Sam looked or lied about Dean, it, Dean wouldn't have given a damn. Amelia especially, since Sam dumped her before he got back. Part of, me, part of me thinks that it would make more sense that the final trial was to sacrifice the one you love. Ooh, actually, ooh. And Dean would have been pleading for Sam to kill him, but Sam refuses to give his best uh, chance, uh, give up his best chance of a normal life because Dean is more important to him. That what they went with worked, but I give, but I credit that more to Jared and Jensen's acting than the writing. Jared, maybe. Jensen, eh, but yeah, that could have been something because 
it does seem like it's just very quickly resolved. As for the feud itself, Weird Dean's storyline was good till you added Sam in, and Sam's storyline was awful till you added Dean in. Very good point. Yes, Dean was a jerk and so overcome by rage and he never questioned how Sam and Amelia broke up, but despite this, Dean showed us clearly that he was remorseful and regretted his actions. Yes, as the season went on, he definitely became more remorseful. This was more like a character kind of thing for Dean in this season. Unlike Sam, who showed no signs of remorse at all. As for Amelia, there's a line, there's this line that drove me crazy that Sam never had a normal life till her. But what about all those years at Stanford? Sam had more time away from hunting in his adult life than Dean, so even though it, it is it is deserved him going back, it didn't feel original. And how exactly is Amelia better than Jess? Hmm, I feel that Amelia was possibly the second chance, and yeah, but you're you're right, they. He, he had a normal life before then, sorry. Ah, crap, sorry, yeah. That's my speaker. Also, if Sam went back to Crowley, uh, back to her, Crowley would have killed her, given them decent events, so him leaving her isn't as impactful as Dean leaving Benny. Now, yeah, I didn't like Amelia or I feel any of the chemistry in the relationship, and I think people only care about her due to the outrage over Dean's treatment. Not Had he not acted out the way he did, no one would have cared about her or Sam's storyline. Again, easiest fix, would have been one scene of Sam and grief o over Dean, but there's no visual scene of that in the season, and it's just lazy that the writers felt left it in to fill in the blanks. And you you bring up a lot of good points here, Patrick. Like, there is some stuff that could have been there, but I think one of the biggest reasons that this season is as mid as it is is one, who knew that this season was going to happen again, um, especially after season seven's reception. Also, as I've said before, they never knew if the show would continue. Like, that's hard to write a show with the idea that there could be a, a continuation, but you also have to make sure that there's an ending. And I think that's my comment here to Mahid here. This is by far the best season finale after Swan's song in the entire show, and I really don't understand how you couldn't love this masterpiece. I like the good parts of it, but like Patrick said, Castiel's change is way too quick, way too quick. Do you have a personal problem with Jeremy Carver, the writer of this episode? And also the Changing Channel episode of which, of course, you criticize the episode very too much. I gave it a 6 out of 7, man. Like, I still love it, but I do admit that out of the two meta episodes, um, The French Mistake is a better meta episode. As for Jeremy Carver, dude, he, he was one of the reasons why Season 3 is my favorite season. Um, I don't... It's not that it's a criticism against him. It's just, like, literally, as other people have pointed out, this season is mid. It has a lot of empty space, especially for 23 episodes, and a quarter of that maybe is actually based on the story. Yes, season seven does the same thing, um, but and eight does do it a tad bit better, but there are so many more episodes that could have been based in story. We got some of the worst filler episodes uh, in a while in this one, and also we just got some really bland episodes. Like The whole season is just bland for a good portion of it. I think the only reason Supernatural didn't get cancelled was because of the perfect writing he had season 8, 9, and 10. Bro, no one remembers 9! <laughs> I certainly don't! Which which literally saved the show in the moment that Andrew Dabbs started the showrunner and the writing, yeah, the show became worse and worse. I agree with you, however, you look at the ratings, they went up when Dab took over. So... Technically speaking, yes, Carver saved it from being canceled after the mess of, six, of seven, but he didn't bring it to the high points of which Dab actually did, which makes me fucking sick to say. And I felt like so much was wasted on a trash moment, like when Jeremy and Carver left the series. Yeah, no, like, well, also, I don't like Car. I, I, I've got a grudge with Carver because when he found out that season 11 wasn't going to be the last season, he left. He left halfway through, so Andrew Dabb had to finish season 11. So, yeah, maybe he was a bit upset that it wasn't ending on his note, but fucking Kripke stayed until the end, and he knew the show was going to keep going, so, like, that's a point against Carver. Carver didn't act well in that, in that aspect. If I would describe season 8 of Supernatural in three words, it would be a mixed bag. Let's do a quick summary of what this season did right. Benny was an interesting character with charm, a character you could not, you could root for. It's a shame that he was never brought back in latter seasons. He only had that one little cameo in season 15, that was it. Yeah, that was a weird cameo, too. 
The entire second half of season eight, Crowley becoming the great villain, the trial story arc, closing the gates of hell, was mostly good. The introduction of Amadon, Metatron, and Sacrifice being a very good finale. Probably my favorite favorite in the series. Now let's summarize what the show did, the season did wrong. The first half of the season is not good. It feels so subpar compared to the second half. Absolutely agree. The Amelia arc is long, boring, and the only thing it accomplishes is making Sam and Amelia look like terrible people. Combine that with Sam's pretty je petty jealousy, hatred of Benny, and the fact that Sam knowingly left Kevin to be tortured by Crowley, it makes him aggressively unlikable for the first half. I, like I said, I don't mind the Amelia arc, but everything else you point out here is absolutely true. Sam's a pretty ugh character, and I think that maybe they wanted Dean to be a dick to kind of take away from that. But yeah, no, he like there's the fact that he left Kevin alone. Like, what the what the shit? Many supernatural fans would also say that Sam not wearing wanting to save Dean from purgatory is out of character, but I personally can let it slide. Same, because I get it. Uh, I mean, we already saw what Sam went through in season three episode of Mystery Spot, and the four months between season three and four when Dean died the last time and was in hell. It's not so far-fetched to believe that Sam would not try to bring Dean back anymore because he's just had enough and in general wanted to leave the whole hunting thing and family business life behind after what he went through in season six and seven. Yeah, because he's got no one around. Like, there's no one. But I can't let it slide with Kevin. That's just bullshit. Absolutely. That's actually a kind of a cool story that could have been done. But, you know, you would have to try and have this show where Dean's in purgatory for like half the season and Sam's with Kevin. Overall, I feel that season 8 of Supernatural is a 6 out of 10 or a 4.5 out of 7. It's definitely far better than structured than 6 and 7, in my opinion, but that first half, man, that's the biggest problem of season 8. I will say, though, season 6 has more... I feel season 6 has a better structure. I feel like... Yeah. And I, I will definitely agree that season 6 structure starts fucking terribly but I still feel it's a better season overall. Especially with the, the whole thing between Crowley and Castiel, like the man who would be king. Such a good character episode in season six. When it comes to Jeremy Carver's first year as a showrunner, he did have some missteps for season eight, but I did still enjoy this season way more than season seven. Uh, yeah, I can agree on that one. Jeremy Carver has a long way, to, has come a long way since time on Supernatural, one of the series Doom Patrol, my mother and brother both love that show, as do I. I have not yet seen Doom Patrol, but I've heard very good things about it. Season 8 is my favorite season because the parallels the it parallels the journeys of seasons 1 to 5 in an inverse way that shapes Dean, Sam and Dean as anti-heroes into the Carver era. Sam giving up hunting and not looking for Dean always made sense to me because, to me, I viewed it as a psychotic breakdown after dealing with this trauma of Lucifer's torture in the cage and losing everything that mattered to him in season 7. His romance with Amelia never bothered me, like most, unlike most fans. I get other fans felt like it was the show steering into a natural sitcom opposed to a supernatural horror with brighter colors but it was established as a contrast to Dean's time in purgatory yep I can agree with that absolutely Dean is a much better character than he was in six and seven I love that he's running on survival instinct at the beginning of the season Castiel dealing with being controlled by the angels made sense to me also because after everything that's happened to this to the species since the season four finale I really love the addition of new characters, and I felt like, to this day, that Benny is the most underrated character in Supernatural. I can agree with that. They really underutilized him. Throughout the season, everyone is relying on self-preservation, especially the villains preventing their operations from being closed off from humanity. It also, it honestly made the angels and demons more interesting to me since the Kripke era opposed to Sam Gamble's attempt on focusing on monsters being the focus of season six and seven. Yeah, I... In some ways, yes, I can agree. I think that the purgatory, like trying to get to the door of purgatory in season six is still, I like it more than the demon trials thing in this one, especially with the outcome. But yeah, like some of the monster stuff in six and seven just really sucked. The monster of the week episodes are so fun. Ah, we can, we can half agree on that, but I can understand how they feel so forgettable for fans. It was a huge retcon to the, uh, uh, to introduce the metal letters as part of John Winter's heritage, but it's a big part of why I feel like the Carver era was more of a reinvention of Supernatural. It's still refreshing that the boys have a place that they can actually call a, a roof with four walls home and that with a lot of hallways and doors of exposition as a sandbox for the writers to play in. Yeah, like, like all the little hidden stuff and all the books and everything. 
The season has a lot of vigor to make up for the backlash of season six and seven, and it shows. I honestly love how it had a great setup for making Sam and Dean go in different directions that we had never seen before, and that they test their morality and growth going forward into season nine and 11, uh, nine to 11 uh, from Carver's version, uh, vision. I am very curious when we get into nine because I have I cannot remember nine except for the first episode. I cannot remember it. Doesn't he? Oh wait, Dean dies at the end of nine, doesn't he? Oh crap! Wow, I, I remember less of ten than I than I thought. The season that brought the series back after two not so good seasons. This season for me does it right by bringing Supernatural back to basics in the new concepts it presents, like Purgatory, the bunker, and the whole thing about the tests to close the gates of hell. There are many good, like the arc of Castiel being brainwashed and Crowley as a villain, as well as Sam being one that takes the tests. It's pretty cool. The problem of the seasons are various filler episodes that take away from the rhythm of the season and the drama of the first half of the season, which is pretty boring. But it's also a welcome uh, evolution of the last two seasons and ends with one of the best season finales of the series. And yeah. Yeah, I can say that for a moment. Yeah, they, some goods and some bads. That's a lot of what season eight is. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, now we're going into the top five best and the top five worst. Uh, some of you probably know what's going to be in the worst. Some of you probably don't know what's going to be in the top best, at least for me. Again, thank you guys so much for having been a part of this journey. Uh, we have a few more to go, and as I said, we have a special one to come, being a conversation between Jay the Zoomster and I, and we're going to be talking about Season 8, um, hoping that it's going to be a good one for you guys. We haven't got to do the conversation yet as of recording this, but I'm hoping that by the time that this comes out, we have done the conversation, but I'll be keeping you guys in the loop about that. I've enjoyed the guy's videos. I think he's done great work with his videos about the supernatural, so I am very, very uh, excited to talk with him about the show. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And until then, I'll see you guys next week.